Thank you. I hope you were all able to get some uh, well-deserved rest and time with friends and family over the holidays. Uh, I took some time off uh, as well, which was fantastic. As I sat on the beach thinking of you all, <laughs> uh, truly, uh, I reflected on the past year and was I felt incredibly grateful. Grateful for the amazing team we have here at DHHS. Grateful for all that we've been able to accomplish this past year, especially in the face of some tough challenges. And grateful for the opportunity that I see ahead for us um, in the important work we're doing in this year ahead, in this decade ahead. It's exciting. Um, I shared with you at the end of last year in an email some of our accomplishments. And if you open up the News and Observer today, there's an op-ed from me uh, talking about all of our accomplishments that we saw in 2019, whether it was that we saw our infant mortality um, rate be the lowest it's been in the 31 years it's ever been tracked. Last year, Last year we launched NC Care 360, which is the nation's first statewide coordinated care network. It's a platform that knits together healthcare and human services. Wow, it just is like living our values um, in one platform. Um, it's been an incredible piece of, of, of work that the team has done. You're going to hear more about it. Um, but it's live now in 50 counties, and it's going to be statewide by the end of this year. In Medicaid, although the move to managed care is on hold, we receive na national recognition for our work to integrate physical and behavioral health. Um, investing in primary care, promoting value-based care, and the program was under budget for its sixth consecutive year. And big, after a couple years of, 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 of struggle, we opened the new Broughton Hospital out in Morganton, so it's beautiful. <laughs> So there's a ton more, and you're going to hear about a lot of the great work, and they're reflected in the team awards that you're going to hear today. And it's just a small snapshot of the work we've accomplished last year, whether it was, you know, having the best nursing home in the state in Black Mountain, or things like that. But, but lots of really great work. Um, and I know everyone in this room puts in so much work uh, to get us to that point. I don't think folks um, who don't work in this department appreciate the deep commitment, the incredible collaboration and the hard work and dedication that needs to go into each and every one of these successes and that each of us owns those successes together. But before we move on and recognize those fantastic teams, I do want to take a minute to update you on where we are with the state budget situation. I also emailed our entire team a couple of times last year as we were interacting with the state budget process. And so as you may be aware, just this week, the Assembly, the General Assembly came in for one day, and then they're gone. Um, and they came and went, but no new action on state budget was taken. So that means that the conference budget that the governor vetoed did not go into effect. Um, and that conference budget, I think as you know, had two things that I thought were going to be pretty challenging for the department. One was a move of this department to Granville County, and none, another was a, a historic cut to the administrative costs um, that were targeted at Medicaid, um, $20 million and then a $40 million cut, which is just historically unprecedented. Um, luckily, we do not have to endure those cuts. So that's good news, right? Preventing bad things from happening is good. But we also didn't, it didn't allow us to have a budget that I thought would move us forward. So some of the things that we had been planning for are now on hold. Some of it was like, as I mentioned, the, the Medicaid team on hold for the managed care transition and others. And I know others are, are dealing with tighter budgets and needing to really think about how do we move forward. And those are really hard and challenging and take an incredible amount of, of uh, planning and thought. And I just appreciate everyone coming together as a team during this time. I think we are waiting for the right budget to move us forward. I think that's the right thing to do. But I just want to acknowledge that that does come with a lot of challenges for our department in the moment. And I just thank you for being a great team, collaborating together, um, and being great stewards of the resources we do have. So hashtag living our values on that. So thank you. Um, 
So let's, on that note about living our values, we see them in beautiful colors along, uh, along the, the way. I just wanted to thank the folks who spent a lot of time getting us to this moment, the folks who have been working to make this, this time possible. So I want to let, I'll say all of their names and I'll have them stand and we can give them a round of applause, but it, it takes a lot of work to get to this moment and make sure we're recognizing folks from around the department and, and get us set up for today. So Yvette Thompson, Kimberly Scott, Debbie Kennedy, Leanne Strauss, Brittany Tillage, Mike Zestra, Zenstra, sorry, Mike Zenstra, Melanie Caswell, Allison Ergel, and of course um, Amanda Parks, Catherine Davis, and Janet Sullivan. So give them all a big round of applause. So moving into the Team Recognition Awards, which we launched last year, we really wanted these to be about teams because we know that no one person achieves these great things. We know that these are about team efforts, and we wanted to focus them around our values, our people-focused, our teamwork, proactive communication, transparency, stewardship, and everyone's favorite joy. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge the importance of diversity amongst our teams. You're going to hear that come up a lot today. It's foundational to setting ourselves up for success. Bringing together that wide range of perspectives and new ideas will always strengthen our ability to serve communities across North Carolina. This year we have another amazing group of award winners I'm excited to acknowledge today. 62 teams were nominated across the six different categories and the deputy secretaries and I will be recognizing the top 18 of those teams, so it was competitive. Um, after we read each team's name, and we're going to tell a little bit about them, we're go we've asked a few representatives from that team to make their way to the stage so we can give you their, the, the award um, right in the moment. And then after we do all of the awards, when we're doing lunch and cookie contests, then we're going to call up the, the full teams so that we can take a group picture um, and know that your names will be hanging um, for the rest of this year in the Adams Building recognizing your achievements. So. When we call, you, call the team's name, representatives will come up, we'll do a nice little picture. At the end, we'll do the big, bigger group picture. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to some of the deputy secretaries, and we're going to start with Tara Myers. All right. Good morning, and welcome to everyone. And as Secretary Cohen said, we are extremely proud of the, the team award winners and all of those who were nominated because really it is just the tip of the iceberg for the work that you all do across all of DHHS, across all state government within the department. So we thank you for that. Um, it is my pleasure to present to you our award winners for People Focused. And as you know, whether you're a direct service provider or not, it is the citizens of North Carolina that we are charged with serving. And we do that, I think, in a collective manner. And so we first want to recognize our teams who have shown exemplary commitment to our value of being people focused. <coughs> Excuse me. These are teams who have been truly committed to the people we serve, delivering value and making a positive impact on the lives and the communities that they affect. So the first team that we're recognizing is the WorkSourced West Morganton Unit in the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation Services. I would like to recognize Ada Gregg, Trisha Hunt, and Larry Norman, who will be receiving the award on behalf of the team. So the WorkSource West team is devoted to helping individuals in Burke County receive the skills, training, and assistance with finding jobs that they need in order to live independently. However, this team goes well beyond helping the clients find employment, working to identify whatever services their clients need to feel like productive and valued members of society and within their respective communities. For example, they often work to connect individuals to food and housing through local human service organizations, from local homeless shelters to Habitat for Humanity. They even sponsored a donation drive where the office staff donated hats, toboggans, purses, and pocketbooks to provide to clients during the holidays. The WorkSource West team has demonstrated extraordinary commitment 
to focusing on the people of Burke County and ensuring that they strive to meet unmet needs. If you're a member of this special team, please stand for your applause and I think we're coming forward for a, a photo. So please come forward and congratulations. So to facilitate it going faster, when, when you hear your award being announced, if you know you're going to be the recipient, just come, come right up. Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. We are moving on to the next team that we're recognizing is the Reduce Retailer Violations Team in the Division of Mental Health, Developmental Disabilities, and Substance Abuse Services. So that would be Rhonda Sanders um, receiving this award on behalf of the team. This team may be small. But mighty, because um, the commitment to the health and safety of the people of North Carolina is huge. This team partnered with state alcohol law enforcement to reduce retailer violations of the sale of tobacco to minors, um, which is a complex task with big consequences. If our state had not been able to reduce the retailer violations, we could have been subject to a $17 million fine from the federal government. What's that? Oh, sorry. But more importantly, the team's focus was on the people of North Carolina. Um, and in just one year, they were able to cut the rate of retailer violations from 20.8% to 12.2%, which is a huge, huge reduction. Huge reduction for our state who have obviously clearly struggled to make headway on this issue. So the reduce retailer violations team has gone well above and beyond to improve the health and the safety of North Carolinians, particularly our minors. So thank you for your commitment to the people we serve. Congratulations. So finally, team three, we're recognizing our business technology and relationship management team <coughs> within NC Medicaid. Ellen Munt, Brandy McMillan, and Christy Stout, will you please come forward to receive on behalf of the team. The business technology and relationship management team works every day to ensure that beneficiaries receive the benefits they are entitled to. They perform research for issues that reach a point of escalation with the department leadership and the governor's office. By interviewing on behalf of beneficiaries struggling to receive benefits, this team makes sure no one falls through the cracks. Many of you are likely familiar with this team's work. What you don't know is that this team has a deep commitment to focusing on the people we serve outside of the traditional working hours. Here are just a few of the examples of their community service work. This team helps provide lunch to the Women's Center every three months on Saturdays. Team members volunteered at the Safe Child Center for Domestic Violence, serving food to women and their children who graduated from the program. They worked with the Interfaith Food Shuttle bagging 83 bags of groceries for our seniors. 
and they spent the afternoon baking for guest families at the Ronald McDonald House in Durham in September. So a huge thank you goes out to the business technology and relation management team for your round-the-clock commitment to the people of North Carolina. Congratulations. for that introduction. <laughs> I, I'm Cody Kinsley and uh, I'm Betsy Tilson, the State Health Director and Chief Medical Officer. And we thought it most appropriate to do the teamwork awards as a team. So we are here to do that. And just so everyone knows that I'm a little sick, I don't usually encourage people to come to work when they're sick, so I'll be giving folks elbows instead of handshakes. That's right. And as a state health director, I do have the legal authority to isolate you. So don't <laughs> make me use my statutory powers, because I do like to use them if, if I If I can. text you to come rescue me, please. Well, no, so that help. you're in isolation jail. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, the first team award uh, we're recognizing is the Healthy Opportunities Team. Um, and so if we can have those members, Erica and Laquana and Amanda, come up on behalf of that um, team as I talk through some of this work. This large cross-functional, cross-divisional team um, works across the whole department to really think about an innovative and complex body of work in which we try to couch in saying that we want to be sure that all North Carolinians have that opportunity for health. And to have the opportunity for health means we do address all of those factors, medical and non-medical factors, that really underlie um, health. Um, and so uh, from a department, we want to think about how do we lead this across the state and the nation? How do we think about true system transformation, health and human services, and build capacity and link those sectors together? How do we think about more strategic financing and funding so that we truly are buying health and being good stewards of our dollars? And then how do we come to this body of work with the great humility of um, we don't know all the answers and how can we be sure that we're continuing to learn and learn so that we can be sure we are serving um, our North Carolinians as best we can? Um, and so in that body of work, just to highlight a few accomplishments um, that have gone on, Secretary Cohen already mentioned one, that we are deploying NC Care 360, which is the nation's first statewide coordinated network that is literally connecting health and human services in service of that whole person's need. We will be statewide by the end of this year. I'm mean, already um, live in 50 counties, already now more efficiently connecting people to those resources that they need. Um, as part of our Medicaid transformation, um, we are designing, and when we launch Medicaid, Managed Care will be launching our pilots, our, Medi our Healthy Opportunities pilots, and to really think about how we use Medicaid going forward to really buy health, that full health for our, for our people. We're working on what's the right workforce um, for this uh, type of work and working on a curriculum for community health workers with uh, D Division of Public Health and Office of Rural Health to really think about this right workforce. Also in partnership with the Office of Rural Health, we developed a standardized set of screening questions and pilot tested that out in 18 of our safety net um, settings. Um, and then finally, with strong partnerships with numerous housing partners outside of the department, um, this small team um, launched back at home, which housed more than a thousand people who were either homeless or at risk of homelessness um, because of Hurricane Florence in those um, areas down east. So that's just a list of some of the incredible work this small but mighty team also has done. And the, the beauty of this is that it is partnerships, not just within the department, but outside of the, the department. So thank you all who've been part of this work. This work is very close to me as well. Um, a little teared up on that. Um, so thank you for all that work um, and thank you.
Okay. The second team we were recognizing is Broughton Hospital's transition team. Vivian Streeter and Olga Probes will accept the award on behalf of the team. Come on down. Thank you. Oh, well, okay. This team has had the enormous task of transitioning staffed patients and equipment from Old Broughton Hospital to the new facility. This team managed a 297-bed psychiatric hospital while preparing the move, installed all new IT and medical equipment in the new building, trained over 1,200 staff on new procedures, finished, furnished a nearly 500 square, 500,000 square foot facility, and physically moved patients and staff into the new Broughton Hospital. This is no small feat, but through their commitment to teamwork, this team was able to be successful. A few examples of this team's innovative approach to teamwork include creating multiple strike teams to work on each facet of the transition, repeatedly engaging in drills to ensure that staff were able to effectively respond to emergencies in the new building, and conducting mock operations with over 100 volunteers to test the systems, processes, and protocols in the new facility. I want to also add that <clears throat> Vivian and her team were able to move everyone into the building in just a few hours which was amazing after years of hard work. And when I asked Vivian how she did it, she told me, well, Lucky Welsh, who was the CEO who had managed several other hospitals, had told her that in good fun and good jest that she wasn't going to be able to do it in a day, let alone in a few hours. And she said she wasn't going to have a man tell him wrong. <laughs> I am so incredibly proud of this team. This has been a long time coming, and they have led the way in it. Thank you so much to the hospital team. Finally, we are recognizing Cherry Hospital's sewing department. Toya Montgomery, Kathy Phillips, Dale Armstrong, and John Miller will accept the award on behalf of the team. The Cherry Hospital sewing department is small but mighty. <clears throat> a small but mighty team of two charged with providing individuals in all 12 of the hospital's patient care units with appropriate shoes and clothing. However, their talents are not limited to mending patient items and issuing clothing. They collaborate closely with the occupational therapy department to design and create specialty items for <clears throat> special items to meet each individual's unique needs. These items include weighted vests that help stabilize patients and improve self-feeding tasks, tactile sensory items built into pockets and collars, breakaway clothing protectors to improve patient dignity and hygiene from excessive salvation, salivation, and weighted lap pads and stuffed animals to promote self-soothing techniques and mood regulation. This team's collaboration with the hospital as a whole has been critical to meeting each patient where they are and improving the care and quality of life of those we serve. I would please join me in congratulating this team. It is my privilege to now introduce Deputy Secretary Ben Money, who will come and take us through proactive communication. Thank you, Deputy Secretary Kinsley. Uh, hope you get well soon. Um, also, congratulations to all the awardees and the teams here. I really do appreciate the commitment that you make to assuring that North Carolina is a healthier state. So next we want to recognize the teams who have demonstrated our value of proactive communication. These are teams who maintain an open and trusting environment for collaboration and continuous improvement with team members, with stakeholders, and the people we serve. The first team we are recognizing is the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner within our Division of Public Health. Dr. Michelle Aurelius, Nikki Marshall, and Dr. Jason Hudson will be accepting the award on behalf of the team. Thank you. 
The, the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner has the difficult task of investigating all deaths in our state that are attributed to injury or violence, as well as natural deaths that are suspicious, unusual, or unintended or unattended by a medical professional. This team's job is to determine the cause and manner of death while providing closure to the families. Their work has been particularly critical to our effort at combating the opioid epidemic, and they have redoubled their efforts in support of impacted North Carolinians. Conducting this work effectively and with sensitivity requires proactively communicating across a large team and directly with the families themselves. For example, this team provides diverse forms of family support through telephone calls and electronic communications, collaboration with law enforcement, assistance with insurance forms, uh, comprehensive toxicology testing, epidemiological studies, and a thorough medical legal autopsy. Let's thank the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner for their work and commitment to proactive communi communication. If you are a member of this team, please stand and be recognized. we are recognizing is our regional educational specialist within our Division of Health Services and Regulation. Todd Messer will accept the award on behalf of the team. Todd, come on down. Our regional educational specialists are responsible for overseeing the provision of initial and continuing education for emergency medical technicians and paramedics across North Carolina. This complex work is essential to ensure effective and high quality emergency medical services statewide. Their subject matter experts are routinely called upon to serve in various roles on, they're on boards, they're on commissions and committees to improve the delivery and educational of emergency medical services. To be successful, this team communicates daily with each team member and with stakeholders regarding the ever-changing aspects of emergency service, medical services education. By proactively communicating with those internal and external to the team, they have showed a deep commitment to accountability, consistency, and customer service. If you are a member of this team, please stand and receive our thanks and congratulations. Finally, we are recognizing Central Regional Hospital's Master Treatment Team. Dr. Luann Kroon, Robin Carr, and Marcy Kaiser will be accepting the award on behalf of their team. Come on down. <laughs> The Master Treatment Plan team was an ad hoc group of subject matter experts who came together to create one of the first electronic inpatient behavioral and medical master treatment plan applications in the U.S. It's a lot to say. We just call it MTP, right? <laughs> this is a tool that can project and modify treatment plans within treatment teams and with the collaboration of the patient. This project brought together experts in psychiatry, psychology, social work, and technology. Furthermore, representatives from all levels of the organization were involved in the process, from direct care staff through the executive sponsors. Being inclusive of diverse perspective, communication across subject areas and different parts of the organization, while working effectively with the vendor, was key to success of this project. 
Thank you to the Massive tre Treatment Plan team for your commitment to proactive communication throughout this project. Again, if you're a member of this team, please stand and be recognized. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce Deputy Secretary Sam Gibbs, who will present the Transparency Awards. Thank you, Ben. Um, right before this meeting, I had an opportunity to meet with a consultant who's doing some work from us, and she has been out and has interviewed over 50 people in, in all of our divisions. And one of the things she said is, I've never worked with a group that you know, is so enthusiastic and they seem to all have the same shared values. And that is awesome that not only the work we're doing with our values is making us better and closer and working better together, but it's also apparent to outside people that are coming in and looking at us. So I was very proud to be here today to let you know that you know, this work under Secretary Cohen's leadership really is making a difference. Uh, next, I want to recognize teams who have demonstrated our value of transparency. These teams who share expertise, information, honest feedback within the department and stakeholders and the community and ask for help uh, when needed. First, we're recognizing the cross-divisional team working to address youth and adult tobacco use. This team spans the divisions of public health, NC Medicaid, Division of State Operated Health Facilities, Division of Mental Health, uh, Developmental Disabilities, and Substance Abuse Services. Accepting the award on behalf of this team are Sally Herndon, Kelly Crosby, Susan Syke Peebles, and Jessica Dickin. Come on down. This team is charged with the extremely complex and multifaceted task of addressing tobacco prevention and the control and control in our state. Their work includes conducting investigations in acute lung injury cases, promoting comprehensive approaches to prevention, partnering with schools to increase awareness and compliance with tobacco-free alcohol policies, and address use, youth use of tobacco. Working with Medicaid and with standard and tailored plans to ensure the benefit design that addresses tobacco use. Finally, working with retailers across the state to decrease uh, youth violation rates. Addressing tobacco use among diverse populations in multiple settings, from our public spaces to school, home, requires a sensitivity and transparency. Thank you and this team for your commitment and transparency through your work. If you're a member of this team, please stand. Congratulations. Second, we are recognizing the Staff Development Department at the Caswell Development Center. Accepted, accepting the award on behalf of this team is Maurice Raspberry, Emily Houston, and Sheila Wooten. Please come up. Caswell Staff Development Department is responsible for providing trainings to prepare staff to interact therapeutically with patients and their families to deliver the highest quality care possible. This is no small task. Their trainings cover everything from CPR to nonviolent crisis intervention, intervention or, uh, to orientation for new nurses. And yet this small team manages to work efficiently and effectively to make sure that they are able to cover all the necessary material. When, it, when a position is vacant, they even make sure they get cross-trained to carry out the du duties of that position without compromising the integrity of the training. The Staff Development Department's commitment to transparency allows their team to cover such a large body of work with a small team. Thank you for your commitment and transparency and throughout your work. If you're a member of the team, please stand up. Thank you very much. Congratulations.
Finally, we are recognizing the Jira team. Anybody know what Jira is? <laughs> Jira is a technology a product that allows cross-team collaboration and information sharing. It's, uh, we use it for Medicaid uh, to launch it, and you know, part of the success of the Medicaid transformation team is to use this, this multifunctional tool. Uh, so the, this division is within information technology. Accepting the award on behalf of the team are Craig Zimmer, Chris Turpin, and Arthur Jones. Please come up. JIRA is a complex software product suite with a variety of uses across the department. The team's job was to provide technical services and, to, and support to use the product. In order to do so, the team had to meet with everyone who wanted to understand more about JIRA and how it can be used to manage a variety of tasks. In addition, they provided training to those who wanted to deepen their understanding of the product. By sharing their expertise across the department and by helping others integrate the tool in their work, this team has demonstrated their commitment to transparency. Thank you to all of the JIRA team for your hard work. If you're a member of the JIRA team, please stand up. Thank you very much and congratulations. It is now my great honor and privilege to introduce to you, Dave Richard. <laughs> so before I start, I have to say, how many of you watched the Chancellor Championship game on Monday night? <laughs> yes, all right, so go Tigers. All right, I'll stop now, I won't bring anything else up. Now, now we want to recognize the, uh, the Stewardship Awards, uh, the winners here. And let me just say a couple of quick words about that. Stewardship is what you all do. So this is so exciting to people that represent you getting this award. I think we ought to all give everybody applause because that's what you do right now, right? So the, team, the teams that won this are teams that, like you do, record, uh, it had the most effective stewards of resources and time to create positive impact on the people we serve, those individuals across this state that are uh, the benefactors of the incredible work that you do. So first, we want to recognize a cross-divisional team that worked on a transition to an electronic physical process, fiscal process. Staff from the Office of the Controller and Disability Determination Services worked on this project together. So Whitney Atkinson, uh, Susan Pittman with DDS and Tracy Hall Hallwell and Caprina Wilson with the Office of Controller. Would you please come up to, uh, to accept the award? Yes. There was a story of uh, things that started quite a while ago. So years ago, the department decided to move to an electronic fiscal process to decrease the processing time for invoices. The complex project involves staff across divisions that required short turnarounds for each step of the process, yet this team persevered through years of challenges to be successful, proving themselves to be goal-oriented and committed to customer service in the process. Ultimately, the move to electronic uh, fiscal process led to numerous cost savings and efficiencies, including reducing paper, printing, and storage costs, yay, uh, reducing room for error due to lost invoices, and improving the speed of payments to providers. I want to thank this team for your stewardship of state resources, and if you're a member of the team out in the audience, please stand up this incredible accomplishment. say it's pretty cool, right? So people that, that are doing things in the background are doing incredible work that will make a huge difference on behalf of providers. That's really good stuff because so many folks here, you do that work and you never get that. So very excited about that one. The second second one we need to recognize is the team for transitions to community living within the Office of the Secretary. So receiving this uh, award, Holly Riddle, Drew Crystal, Jessa Johnson will accept on behalf of the team. So please come on up, guys. And get up here. Yay. And Sam Hedrick, we're going to drag her up too because it's a small team. The transition to community living is a small team of five focused on serving thousands of North Carolinians who have severe mental illness. By partnering with the LMEMCOs, 
divisions across the HHS department leadership, they have helped people to transition out of adult care homes and psychiatric hospitals into the community. Through effective stewardship of their time and resource, this small team, five people remember, has managed to help thousands. Thanks to their work from 2018 to 2019, over 2,000 people obtained and were able to maintain housing. Over 2,000 people received supported employment services. Over 1,000 people received in-reach services or helped transitioning out of large congregate settings. And nearly 5,000 people were assisted by an assertive community treatment team. And then finally, 1,000 people found a home in a community. That's pretty cool stuff. So thank you so much for the Transitions Community Living and they're all up here now, so thank you. Last of our stewardship awards uh, will be recognized in North Carolina Medicaid's Provider Operations Unit. Uh, Christina Bunch, uh, Chantel uh, Eric Zega, I want to make sure I get that right, and Melanie Whitener will accept the award on behalf of the team. So please come on up. Not only stewardship, but I think that's joy too, so that's good. The, the Provider Operations Unit played a critical role in the uh, planned rollout of Medicaid managed care. We will go live, right, but the planned rollout of Medicaid managed care. Just a few of the projects that they have led include the enrollment broker directly, directory escalations and modifications, which allowed people to know where their physician was and make choices about the health plan they wanted to be in. The RFP integration and the PHP oversight and compliance. These projects required collaborating across all units, interpreting DHB oversight requirements, writing business requirements, regarding PHP oversight, among other complex tasks. Only by effectively stewarding their limited time and leveraging the strengths of the diverse voices that were part of this process were they able to successfully tackle this huge project. So if you're a member of this team, I want you all to stand, and I want to make sure we give a, uh, a round of applause for their incredible commitment. Turn it over to our Chief Deputy, uh, Susan Perry. Hi, everybody. Hi. Okay, great. Um, it makes me crazy happy to be able to bring it home today with our last value, which is a joy, because I feel a lot of joy every day in my work, and I wish you all incredible joy in your personal lives and in your work lives as we move into 2020. And I was looking around the room, and I wanted to actually call out some people who bring me joy every day. And I couldn't do it, because there's so many of you who do so many things every day um, to bring joy into my life, and I know to bring joy into the people that we serve. And I will tell you another thing that brings me incredible joy is actually being here today with all of you and hearing about the incredible work that's happening and across our department and how diverse that work is. Hearing about reducing retailer violations and launching managed care and the incredible work that's happening to make lives better for people with physical and mental issues in the sewing department with their incredible creativity. It's just wonderful to hear. Office of the Chief, Medical Examiner, I gotta call y'all out. When you were standing up here, I was casting you in certain TV shows that I watched. <laughs> Later you can come tell me about how what they do on TV is all wrong. Um, so I'm psyched to give the Joy Awards and um, I'm gonna start with recognizing the SPOT team at Central Regional Hospital. Robin Carr, Paula Appel, and Dana Dowry. Bring it, come on down. So 
So as part of the Employee Engagement Action Plan, this team sought to develop a peer-to-peer -peer recognition program to spotlight staff who go above and beyond the call of duty at work. The team decided to call their program SPOT for special person on the team and chose a smiling Dalmatian as the mascot. Their plant operations team even went so far as to build miniature dog houses out of scrap so that staff could deposit cards praising fellow employees in the houses. Thanks to the team's creative spirit and commitment to recognizing the talents of their peers, the project has been a huge success. Thank you to the SPOT team for bringing joy to the staff at Central Regional Hospital and to the department as a whole. If you're a member of this team, please stand for applause. Fishing Tournament Team and our Division of Services for the Blind, Kim Tyler, Betts Blow, and Ray Chavez, come up. This super awesome team came together to make it possible for blind and visually impaired individuals from Orange and Durham counties to travel to the Outer Banks for the 2019 Visually Impaired Persons VIP Fishing Tournament, an event hosted by the North Carolina Alliance. The tournament spanned four days and hosted over 400 individuals with vis visual disabilities, offering an inclusive environment for a population with unique needs. By giving the participants the opportunity to socially interact with other visually impaired individuals, this team demonstrated their commitment to inclusion and to joy. Thank you to this team for your efforts to promote joy at work. If you're a member of this team, please stand for applause. Finally, last but certainly not least, we are going to recognize the Joy Bags team in the Division of Child Development and Early Education. Christy Snugs, Barbie Anderson, and Rebecca Hammond. Please come down. So at the conclusion of their monthly team meetings, this team has a unique tradition. They put together inspirational items and quotes in individually wrapped bags to swap among team members. In other words, everyone leaves the meeting with their own little bag of joy. This team's creativity and investment in bringing joy to every member of their team goes a long way towards fostering a happy, motivated, and inclusive work environment. Joy Bags are a monthly reminder of the importance of joy at work and our commitment to serving North Carolinians with joyful hearts. Thank you to the Joy Bags team for fostering joy at work. If you're a member of the team, please stand for applause, DCDE. Congratulations, everyone. I'm going to turn it back over to our fearless leader, Secretary Mandy Cohen. Okay. All right. So thanks, Susan. And I want to ask everyone, I think everyone deserves one more final round of applause. This was a fantastic, fantastic program. Terrific. Well, we're not done yet. If you're a member of one of the recognized teams, we're going to be calling you to the front shortly so we can be sure to take a picture. Um, so be, please be ready to come forward. And we hope that you can stay to enjoy the refreshments as well as the cookie contest. Thanks to everyone who baked. Our judges this year will be uh, Hattie Gawandi, Dave Richard, and Ben Money. There was a fight. Who could be the judge? And they won. Um, so we hope you can stay. And in closing, I just want to share a 
few thoughts as we begin the new year. And as you know, we're going next week, we're going to be celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And let's remember how important it is um, that we cultivate an inclusive and collaborative environment that values employees with different life and work experiences and incorporates the different viewpoints that we bring to our work. Um, so as we think about inclusion and belonging to this workplace, it's somewhere, some place that everyone can feel welcome and connected to each other and really like a family. It also means sharing information, breaking down silos, encouraging collaboration, and being open to trying new things. And inclusion is inextricably linked to team ex excellence. And again, uh, you will hear us continue to come back to this notion of belonging and inclusiveness over the course of this year because it is so critical for us to be successful as a team. So I wanna tell you once again about how grateful I am um, to be able to do this work with you every day. Um, we have such a talented and passionate team. I'm so lucky to serve as your secretary. Thank you so much for coming today. Congratulations again to the team award winners and here's to an amazing 2020. Thank you. Thank you.